Bună dimineața, uh, good morning everyone. I'm Mircea Joana and I'm a president of the Aspen Institute. And together with my dearest friend uh, and co-worker on the Bucharest Forum, Alina Inayek, on behalf of GMF and Aspen, we salute you and welcome you to the capital city of Romania, to the Bucharest Forum. This is the sixth edition of what we try to do together, bringing people from uh, multiple geographies and geopolitics and geoeconomics, trying to understand how the world is evolving, trying to get out from uh, the exclusive conversation about Europe and the Euro-Atlantic space and try to understand how the Euro-Atlantic space and Eurasian space and the world as a whole do interact. For two days, I dare say, Bucharest is the intellectual and strategic capital of Europe. As Romania tries, with the successive Romanian governments, and I salute the presence of Mr. Meleșcanu, my dearest friend and, and uh, supporter, and uh, Mr. Laufer from a younger generation, and all the other dignitaries, uh, ambassadors, and uh, friends of Romania. We try to also put Romania on the map. And Romania Gateway, a concept that was initiated by Aspen with the help of our knowledge partners from McKinsey and other smart people, smarter people than we are, we are trying also to put Romania on the map. We have an exceptional participation this year. 50 speakers from 22 different nations, from three continents. We are trying to understand and educate ourselves on where the world is going. Because as I was talking to Minister Meleshkano on the way up, we couldn't imagine, even the ones who have some experience and some sophistication, and this hall is full of people like this. We couldn't anticipate the turbulent times, the intense disorder, the multiple trends, micro, mega, meta, trends that do intersect and create basically an unraveling of the world order. Something that we thought would be perennial and forever, and probably for Romanians and many of the newcomers into EU and NATO, we believed that joining EU and NATO, this will be the end of history. No, it's just the beginning of a new journey. This is what Bucharest Forum is all about. This is what Aspen Institute, Romania, and our other six Aspen Institutes in Europe, and the global network, and also the GMF global presence are trying to do in these two days in Bucharest. There is a shift, not only in geopolitics, not only in the way America, the traditional enforcer of the liberal order after the Second World War, is looking at the world, not only in the way in which Europe fights with centripetal and centrifugal tendencies at the same time, I salute the Spanish ambassador here, our dear friend, and I'm convinced that he knows that all of us, especially in our region, we are looking at great attention to the evolutions which are worrisome in this wonderful country where we have so many friends and so many Romanians who live and work. Digital companies are replacing traditional powerhouses. Business models are changing. Politics are changing. The social contracts are changing. And with so much change and so much uncertainty, there is a natural discontent and disbelief and mistrust of the public opinions in the traditional elites. This is why I was so proud yesterday to have our bright exceptionally bright fellows and alumni from Aspen and GMF, our young leaders, gathering from the many countries where they live and work, and we hope 
that this group would contribute to, to a conversation about the future of Europe. Core and peripheries is another subject that will be debated these two very days. This is not only about the core and periphery of Europe, which is quite an intense conversation. You listen to President Macron and President Juncker being so enthusiastic and euphorical about the future of Europe, but we also see other tendencies in Europe. There are multiple peripheries in Europe and around Europe. Periphery of the Eurozone. Periphery of the countries that are not part of the Eurozone. Even further peripheries of countries, you know which ones, that are not even part of Schengen and still have a cooperation and verification mechanism sitting on, on our shoulders. But what are our friends in the Western Balkans? Or in Ukraine, or Moldova, or Georgia? What about the independence referendum in the Iraqi Kurdistan? What's going to happen there? What's happening in the Black Sea? Harman Ullman, a bright strategist, just wrote a piece in the New York Observer and also translated into a Romanian version in other world about the need to pivot towards the Black Sea. And it's not only about Russia. China is coming. Japan is coming back. Korea, all present at the Bucharest Forum, are coming back. This is a moment of exceptional change. And I think with the brain power in this wonderful room, and with the sophistication and diversity of your presence and contributions, I hope we'll be able to educate our leaders, to make our elites understand that sitting idle and just waiting for the change to come to an outcome, this is something that could be dangerous. There's a recent book published in the US that made a sort of a historical arithmetic of world disorder and world change in the last few centuries. 13 times when there was a change of global hegemonic powers and ascending powers were, of course, trying to replace the dominant power of the day. 13 times these things happened, nine times through war, and only four times by a relatively peaceful transition. Which will be the answer of human mankind at this new transformation and global shifts? These are questions that I think should be of interest to all of us, and we look forward to a wonderful, wonderful uh, two days in, in Bucharest. Also, Romania is trying to understand and to position ourselves, and I think all the other countries in our region are also facing the same test. We thought that being absorbed into EU and NATO would be, as I mentioned before, the end of history. No. But for Romania and some other countries in our region, we have a couple of exceptional opportunities to put ourselves into the driver's seat and escape from the periphery and become, in a modest way, a center and a more dynamic and a more diverse and a more prosperous and better governed country. We are celebrating, and tonight we'll have a small celebration, our 20th anniversary of our strategic partnership with the United States of America. I was much younger, and I was an eyewitness to, to what really happened in the last 20 years between us and the US. It's just exceptional. We have today a de facto alliance with the United States. This is a big deal. We also celebrate 10 years since we joined the European Union, another historical event for our nation. Romania, together with our friends in Bulgaria, our friends in Austria, our friends in Croatia, our friends in Estonia, our friends in Finland, for the next two and a half years, we'll have these rotating presidencies of European Union Council, and we want and we salute the presence of these representatives to our conference in Bucharest to try to have more continuity and try to make sure that this is not just a show, a display of good or mediocre organization of the presidencies. And the road to Sibiu, where the informal EU summit will take place after Brexit in 2019, in May 2019, is something we'd like to understand how can also our country, our region, benefit 
from this. Romania will also chair in 2018 the rotational presidency of the Three Seas Initiative. We have friends from the Baltic to the Adriatic and to the Black Sea, and we want to see if we can help the Romanian presidency of this, of this eastern flank uh, and complex strategic conversation become as successful as, as possible. We have exceptional world-class journalists at this conference. And I'm so grateful to Liz Clayman from Fox Business. She has Romanian roots. She will tell you about those things. That's why probably she's so smart and, 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 uh, and penetrating. But also Samuel Burke, the business and technology correspondent of CNN. Sam, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us in Bucharest. Tomorrow we'll have Steve Clements, the editor-in-chief of The Atlantic Life, another sophisticated news platform in the US, and a partner of Aspen US in the Ideas Festival. Tim Judah from The Economist, a long-term friend and uh, a loyalist of the Bucharest Forum editions. Andrew Robel from uh, Emerging Europe. He's a bright, forward-looking young journalist, Ali Aslan. Thank you again, Ali, for being with us. We also try to put on the stage some of the bright Romanians that occupy positions of dignity, not only in Romania. We have lots of ministers and secretaries of state, but also Romanians that do an excellent job overseas in, in, in important positions overseas. Christiana Pashka Palmer, she's a UN Assistant Secretary General for Biodiversity. Mihna Motok, a deputy head of the Commission's think tank. Florinica from the External Service of the European Union. Sorin Ducaru is not here because uh, uh, another Assistant Secretary General of NATO, Wayne Bush, will be with us tomorrow. But Sorin, I think Minister Meleshkanu, our boss, can agree that Sorin is probably one of the best products of our School of Diplomacy and strategic thinking. Uh, Cornel Ban, an eminent economist from uh, Boston University and will help us crafting the core and periphery conversation. I would like also to, to mention, and you've seen up here, uh, the Aspen members, our board members, the sponsors of this event. Thank you so much. We try to, to have an event of great quality, and without you, this would not be possible. Our media partners from um, Age Press, uh, Radio France Internationale, Cale Europeana, Energinomics. I'd like to thank the uh, Commission delegation, European Commission delegation in Bucharest for being with us officially, institutionally for the first time. Our friends from the EBRD, EIB, and of course the many embassies that are helping us and also bringing uh, particip participants to our conversation. You also have a couple of night owl sessions tonight. I encourage all of you to participate. These are more intimate uh, Chatham House rule conversations that are I would say, Alina, I think this is probably the, the most uh, intense conversation on various topics. Uh, spent a few hours more with us tonight. We also have a number of readings and papers. McKinsey and KPMG are our knowledge partners of our conference, and also members of the Institute. And of course, uh, you have an Aspen Events app on Apple Store that I think all of you received so you can have uh, um, information about, about all this. This conference, the public part, is also broadcasted live all over the place through many means, uh, streamlining and everything else. I would like to thank Telecom, a member of the Institute that helped us have access to the fiber optic because you need lots of broadband and, and, and speed for doing this. And also on the way down or up, please uh, Stop one second to look to the wonderful exhibition that we have downstairs, the Black Sea Diaries photo exhibition in the foyer, powered by Funky Citizens, a project that GMF has supported. You'll see so much talent and so much intensity and so much desire to 
overcome the curse of history in the nations around the Black Sea.